At the end of the Westminster terror inquests, a colleague of the police officer who was killed tells how he tried to save his friend. The inquest of today concluded that the attacker, Khalid Massoud, was lawfully killed by the police. Also tonight... Good evening. An inquest has found that the Westminster attacker Khalid Massoud was lawfully killed after murdering four pedestrians and a police officer in March last year. The Metropolitan Police has again apologised for failing to prevent the murder of PC Keith Palmer, who was stabbed by Massoud within the grounds of the Palace of Westminster. His colleague, PC Nick Carlyle, who is standing next to PC Palmer, has told the BBC how he tried to save his friend. From the Old Bailey, Daniel Sanford reports. A student and drill rapper from London has been sent to prison for seven years for trafficking drugs into Barrow in Furness in Cumbria. Daniel Olaloka was jailed alongside Peter Adebayo. Both were part of a so-called county lines gang, where city gangs use addicts in smaller towns and rural areas to deal drugs for them. An unprecedented 15 people have died from overdoses in Barrow since December. Our social affairs correspondent, Michael Buchanan, reports. A delegation from Saudi Arabia has arrived in Turkey. They claim they are there to investigate the disappearance of the Saudi journalist and government critic Jamal Khashoggi. Allegations he was murdered inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul have been dismissed by Riyadh as baseless. Mark Lowe. With the budget just over two weeks away, the Chancellor has opened the door to tax rises, saying the government may have to raise a little more tax to pay for the NHS. Philip Hammond has also told the BBC that Britain could see an economic boost if it successfully negotiates a Brexit deal with the EU. Our economics editor, Kamal Ahmed, reports from Bali, where the IMF is meeting. The government has further outlined what could happen if we leave the EU without a deal as part of its contingency planning. Eurostar might be suspended and tickets no longer valid, and the electricity supply to Northern Ireland could be disrupted. Our deputy political editor, John Pienaar, reports. The head of the company at the centre of the controversy about stockpiled medical waste has hit back against claims of mismanagement. Speaking for the first time, Gary Pettigrew of Healthcare Environmental Services told the BBC that body parts were not stored any longer than they should have been. The company has been stripped of some NHS contracts after hundreds of tonnes of clinical waste piled up at its sites. Mr Pettigrew was speaking to our health editor, Hugh Pinn. Patisserie Valerie's chairman has said it will be business as normal after securing a rescue deal, saving the cafe chain and almost 3,000 jobs. Princess Eugenie has married Jack Brooksbank at St George's Chapel in Windsor. The royal family and celebrities were among 850 guests at the ceremony. Eugenie, ninth in line to the throne, was given away by her father, Prince Andrew, watched by her grandmother, the Queen, and by her mother, Sarah Ferguson. Nicholas Witchell reports. More football now and tonight both England and Northern Ireland have been in action in the UEFA Nations Cup. England had to play in a totally empty stadium after Croatia were punished after a swastika was marked on their pitch before a match in 2015. They were hoping to gain revenge for their defeat in the World Cup semi-finals. Northern Ireland were in action away to Austria. Our sports correspondent Andy Swiss reports. The story of how one British record label established Jamaican reggae here in Britain and influenced some of the biggest names in punk and pop will be premiered tonight. Rude Boy, the story of Trojan Records, marks the 50th anniversary by retracing the label's role in breaking cultural barriers with artists like Jimmy Cliff and Desmond Decker. Colleen Harris reports. <laughs> 